Good morning, respected principal, ma'am, teachers, and all my dear friends. On the occasion of National Library Week, I, Andalakshmi of Class Seven, is here with a small speech on importance of library. First of all, I would like to tell a quote by Meekan Shepherd. A trip to the library is like coming home and going on an adventure at the same time. As gateways to knowledge and culture, libraries play a fundamental role in society. The resources and services they offer create opportunities for learning, support literacy and education, and help shape the new ideas and perspectives that are central to the creative and innovative society. A library is an important source of knowledge to young minds in schools. It develops the important habit of reading among the students. School libraries help to impact positively on the academic achievements of the students. Students can perform better during examination by reading various books. Libraries are the only place where we are free from all conventions because reading is absolutely a matter of personal choice. Readers are allowed to read what they like and also read the book according to their own manner. Nobody would check them or disturb them since everything is systematic and the atmosphere is calm so students can gain more in less time. One can save time and energy studying in libraries. Thank you. of class 7 on occasion of national library week we the students of class 7 is going to present skit on apj abdul kalam early childhood incident from the book winds of fire <laughs> family in Rameshwaram. Kalam inherited the values of honesty, self-discipline, goodness and kindness from his parents, Zainul Abdin and Aishama. Dr. Kalam in his childhood was influenced by his family, his teachers and his friends. He imbibed values of secularism, honesty and discipline. Certain incidents of his childhood left a deep impression on Kalam's young mind. Kalam's best friend was Ramnath Shastri, who belonged to Orthodox Hindu Brahmin family. Ramnath's father, Lakshmana Shastri, was a Hindu priest at Rameshwaram. One day, when Kalam was in 5th standard at Rameshwaram Elementary School, Kalam and Ramanath used to sit together on first bench. The new teacher, when came to the class, didn't like Muslim boy sitting with Hindu priest's son. The boy with white cap, stand up. How dare you sit beside a Hindu priest's son? Go and sit to the back bench. Both of them felt sad. Ramnath was weeping when Kalam shifted to the last bench. After school, Ramnath 
and Kalam went home and revealed the incident to their parents. Why are you crying, my son? New teacher scolded me for sitting beside Brahmin boy Ram Nath and asked me to sit at the back bench. Why are you crying, my son? New teacher scolded Kalam for sitting next to me for being a Muslim boy. He asked Kalam to sit on the back bench. Ramanath's father, Lakshmana Shastri, summoned the teacher. Not spread the poisons of social inequality and communal intolerance in the minds of innocent children. You should either apologize to Kalam or quit the school and the island. I am really very sorry, Kalam. I have learned that as a teacher, it's my duty to teach the children to live in peace and harmony. Respected Principal Ma'am, Teachers and all my dear friends, I am Anitalakshmi of Class 7. On the occasion of National Library Week, we the students of Class 7 is here with a drama from the book Wise and Other Wise, which has a theme of honesty comes from hurt. Three years ago, one bright June morning, when Sudha was reading Canada newspaper as usual, it was the day the secondary school leaving certificate results had been published. The entire front page was taken at the list of rank holders and their photographs. Do you know who is this Sudha and what is her background? She was brought up in a professor's family. She is also a teacher. Of all the photographs in that morning's newspaper, one boy's snapshot caught her attention. She couldn't take her eyes off him. His name was Hanman Tappa and that he had secured the 8th rank. That was all the information she could gather. Oh, Hanman Tappa's photograph is published again, this time with an interview. I am Hanuman Tappa. I am coming from Rampuram. My father is a coolie and I am the oldest of five children. We belong to a tribal group. I live in a village and my father is the sole breadwinner. He get to earn only rupees 40 a day. So that's why I am not able to continue my studies. Sudha felt sorry for the bright boy Hanman Tappa. Now she starts to think. Most of us send our children to tuitions and to coaching classes. We buy them reference books and guides and provide the best possible facilities for them without considering the cost. But it was different for Hanuman Tappa. He had excelled in spite of being denied some of the basic necessities of life. Hanman Tappa's postal address was provided in the interview. Without wasting much time, she took a postcard and wrote to him. Dear Hanman Tappa, I am Sudha Murthy. I have seen your interview in the newspaper today. I am writing this letter to know whether you could come to Bangalore. Just then her father returned from his morning walk. He read the letter and said, Where will he have the money so far? If you want him to come here, send the money for his bus fare plus a little extra for himself to buy a dozen of clothes. Now she adds one more line to it. I would pay for your travel and some clothes. Within four days, she received a similar postcard in reply. First, he thanked her for the letter. Then he expressed his willingness to come to Bangalore and meet Sudha. Immediately, she sent him some money and details of her office address. When he finally arrived in her office, he looked like a frightened calf that had lost its way. It must have been his first trip to Bangalore. He was humble. He wore a clean shirt and pants, and his hair was neatly patterned and combed. We are happy about your academic performance. Do you want to study further? 
we would like to sponsor you. This means we will pay your fees for any courses you would like to take, wherever it may be. Hanman Tappa didn't answer. Then her senior colleague who was there in the office with her interrupted with a smile. Don't go at the speed of bits and bytes. Let the boy understand what you are suggesting. He can give us his answer at the end of the day. Hanman Tappa was ready to return home. He said in a low and steady tone. Madam, I want to pursue my studies in Teachers Training College in Bellary. That's the one nearest to my village. Sudha agreed instantly but spoke to him a little more to find out whether there was any other course that he preferred. She was just trying to make it clear to him that they would pay the fees of any courses that he might choose. The boy, however, seemed to be exactly what he wanted. How much money should I send you per month? Uh, does the college have any hostel facilities? I will be back after collecting the correct details. I require approximately rupees 300 per month. I plan to take a room on rent and share it with a friend. We would cook for ourselves in order to keep the expenses down. She sent him rupees 1,800 to cover his expenses of six months. He acknowledged her draft without delay and expressed his gratitude. Time passed. One day, she suddenly remembered that she had to pay Hanman Tappa for the next six months. So, Sudha sent him another draft of 1,800 rupees. This too was duly acknowledged, but she was surprised to find some currency notes in the envelope along with this letter. I was taken aback. Such poverty and yet such honesty. Hanmantapa knew I expected no account of the money sent to him for his monthly expenses. Yet he had made it a point to return the balance money. Unbelievable but true. Experience has taught me that honesty is not the mark of any particular class, nor it is related to education or wealth. It cannot be taught at any university. In most people, it springs naturally from the heart. I did not know how to react to the simple village boy's honesty. I just prayed that God would continue to bestow the best on Hanumantappa and his family. Hello everybody, I am Diana Vas of class 7 from KVNTPC, Kankulam. Today, we students of class 7 are here with a skit on the life of Sonida Ali Sadeh from Good Night Stories of Rebel Girls. Sonida Ali Sadeh was born on 1996 Afghanistan. She is a rapper, so let's watch her story. 10 year old Sonida coming back home after playing. How many times I have told you Sonida to come back home early. It's not good for girls to play till night. Sorry father, I will not repeat it again. Okay. Sonida, come here. I want to talk to you. I am coming ma. It is the time to get your brother married. But we have no sufficient money for your brother's marriage. So we have to send you in a marriage, a man has agreed to marry you. So you should take care of yourselves. Ma, I didn't understand about that. You will understand it clearly after some time. For some couple of days, Sonida had been cared by her parents a lot, buying her new clothes. But Sonida didn't know exactly what all this meant. But she didn't want to get married. She wanted to learn, write and sing music. At the last moment, the marriage arrangements fell through. War broke out in Afghanistan where the family lived and Sonida and her brother were sent to live in a refuge camp in Iran. Sonida went to a school nearby and she started writing down her songs. When Sonida was 16 years old, her mother came to visit her. 
It's a long time I have seen my daughter. We have to go back to Afghanistan. But why? We have found another husband who wanted to buy you. Again, Sonita said no, but she loved her mother, but she did not want to get married. She wanted to be a rapper. Sonida wrote a hard-hitting song called Bride for Sale and uploaded it on YouTube. The video went viral and Sonida became famous. She won a scholarship to study music in America. She always says, In my country, a good girl should be silent. But I want to share the words that are in my heart. Hello all. I am Badra B from class 7. Before ending this video, I want to share one thing with you all that this story of Sonita Ali Sade teaches us that we can break barriers and achieve our dream. Just like Sonita, we all can fly high and achieve our goals. My name is Srihardev. Today I have dressed like a Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam and I have few quotes which is told by a Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Every pain gives a lesson and every lesson changes life. If you fail, never give up because fail means the first attempt in learning. If you want to shine like a sun, first burn like a sun. Thank you. Hey there you people, I am Geeky Velma from Scooby Doo. Things were quite clear until a hundred years later. But it all changed when Cletus Darrow found gold here and renamed a town Crystal Cove. Hello everyone, I am Detective Sherlock Holmes and I solve crimes. The Naughtiest Girl is a set of mind-blowing books written by the famous author Enid Britton. The books are about a naughty, kind-hearted, courageous and clever little girl named Elizabeth Allen who doesn't want to go to boarding school. She swears that she would be naughtiest girl in the school and come back home by after. But when she starts school and develops a fondness of her lessons, she begins to enjoy a little. And once she makes friends, she is torn between choosing whether to leave them or go back on her word of leaving school early. The one thing I liked about the set of books is that Elizabeth never gave up. She made mistakes, learned to apologize and even though she got into trouble, she gained knowledge from everything she did. I am and DPC Kayam Club here to tell a brief book review about one of my favorite book that is the story of my life which is the autobiography of Helen Keller. About the author. Helen Keller was born on 27 June 1818 in Alabama in USA. She was an American author, political activist and lecturer. She was the first deaf blind person to earn a Club. Today I am here before you with a book review on the book The Adventures of Tom Savior. The Adventures of Tom Savior is written by Mark Twain. It was an 1876 novel about a boy growing up along the Mississippi River. Tom Savior is a little mischievous boy who lives with his aunt Polly and his half-brother Seth. His adventures start from here. After playing hooky from school on Friday and dirtying his clothes in a fight, Tom Today I am talking about a real incident from our beloved Gandhi's childhood. In his childhood, Gandhi never told a lie. Once the inspector visited his school class and gave a few words of dictation. The third word was scheduled. Gandhi's friends were able to spell the word properly, but Gandhi wouldn't know how. The inspector began going around to check each student paper. While the inspector moved from student to student, the teacher saw that Gandhi's spelling was wrong, so he 
touched Gandhi's leg with his foot to get his attention. With his eyes, he urged Gandhi to look at someone else's paper. But Gandhi didn't want to copy from anyone. When the inspector came to Gandhi, he said, This boy doesn't know how to spell kettle. The inspector was not angry, but he was disappointed. Bad Gandhi did know the answer. The teacher was very angry with Gandhi and said, I told you to look at your friend's paper, but you wouldn't listen to me. You are a disgrace to my class. Gandhi said, I may a disgrace, but I wouldn't tell a lie. Gandhi was sorry he had made a mistake and had displeased to his teacher, but he had pleased himself by being honest. Story. The name of the story is Always Share. Once upon a time, there lived a boy and his parents. The boy's name is John. They were very rich. John was a selfish boy, so he had no friends. He will quarrel every time with his friends. He never shared his toys with anyone. His parents were worried as how to teach him about kindness and sharing. One day, John was returning from school on his new bicycle. He was watching a boy fell into a ditch and hurt himself. The boy cried, Ah, hold on my arm. John would never help anyone. But that day, he felt sad for the boy. So he rushed to him and helped him to stand up. He said to the boy, Looks like you have fractured your hand. Sit behind me. I will ride you to the hospital. Later that evening, the boy's parents visited John and thanked him. You are a very kind boy. God will always bless you. After hearing these words, John's parents were proud about their son's kindness and sharing. John's parents teach many times him about kindness and sharing. But he did not he was not ready to hear their words. After they had left, John's father said, Son, see the blessings you receive by being kind and sharing. John understood the importance of being kind and decides to share always. My story is ending here. The moral of the story is Share is the best moral value. Story name The Osu Invite the Goat Once upon a time, there was an Os naming Big. He had a younger brother named Little Red. These two brothers did all the carting on a large farm. A lesser goat also lived on the same farm. The farmer who owned it, the farm had only one daughter. She was soon to be married. Her mother gave all day orders that the goat should be fattening for the wedding feast. Feast. When little Red noticed that the goat was fed on choice food, he said, "Story is the donkey. Once there was a washerman who had ten donkeys. The oldest of them 
was his favorite as the oldest donkey had stayed with him for the longest time. Once, when they were returning home from a long journey, the oldest donkey fell into an open pit. The washerman was sad as the old donkey was his favorite out of the ten. When he looked inside the pit, he saw that the pit was quite, quite deep and the donkey was lying on the bottom and crying. The washerman couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't see his crying donkey suffer. So he decided that he would he would put the donkey out of his misery by burying it alive. He took a shower and started putting dirt into the pit. Today I am going to say the story about the grocery seller and the donkey. Once there was a grocery seller and a donkey. Every day they went to the market to sell groceries. Every day they had to pass a river. One day the donkey was going through the river with a bag of salt on its back. Suddenly it slipped and fell down. Going to tell a story. My, and the title of my story is The Proud Rose. Once upon a time there was a beautiful rose plant in a garden. One of one rose flower on the plant was proud of its beauty. However, it was disappointed that it was growing next to an ugly cactus. Story name is The Lion and the Mouse. A lion was once sleeping in the jungle when.